forces on the Dutch East Indies and the subsequent occupation of the Dutch naval and air bases at Tarakan in Borneo and Medano. In Salabi, were announced by the Imperial headquarters at 6 o'clock in the evening. The communique follows. The Japanese army and naval forces maintain a close cooperation with each other, carried out surprise landings in front of the enemy at Tarakan in Dutch Borneo and may not May not all in Celebes at dawn, January the 11th. In January the 12th, the enemy at Terracon surrendered to us, while the port of May not all has also been captured by the Japanese. The communique declares that the objective of the present military operation in the Dutch East Indies is to capture the naval and air bases of the enemy, who has been tempering the activities of the Japanese vessels in the Philippines and the East North Borneo. Terracon. Well, the Japanese force of land of Sunday, the small island at the northeastern tip of Dutch Borneo, facing the Celebi Sea. Besides being a water port, the island is rich in oil resources. Maynado is a port town at the northeastern point of Celebi Island, due south of Mindanao of the Philippines. Being the capital of Minnesota Town, the town has a population of 25,000, one third of which are the Chinese merchants. Concerning the commencement of the Japanese hostilities against the Netherlands forces in East India, the Japanese government issued the following statement at 6 o'clock Monday evening. The statement follows. Although the Japanese government previously declared war on the United States and the British Empire, they have refrained from taking any hostile measures against the Netherlands in their earnest desire of avoiding, if possible, calamity of war between the inhabitants of the Netherlands and Sunday. The Netherlands government, however, have notified the Japanese government that, in view of the opening of hostilities by Japan against the United States and the British Empire, with which the Netherlands is in close and inseparable relationship, they recognize that a state of war has come to exist between Japan and the Netherlands. Not only that, the Netherlands forces have since actually resorted to various hostile acts toward Japan. And furthermore, the Netherlands has turned their colony of East Indies into the bases of the United States, the British Empire, and the Netherlands in their war against our empire. Japan entertains no intention whatever of hostile nature toward the innocent inhabitants of the Netherlands East Indies. But, in view of the necessity of destroying the hostile acts of the Netherlands, as well as of protecting the lives and property of Japanese nations there, the Imperial Japanese military and naval forces commenced hostilities against the Netherlands forces on January the 11th. This is a statement issued by the Japanese government concerning the commencement of hostilities against the Netherlands forces in East Indies. Also, acts of Dutch East Indies authorities which have compelled the Japanese to open hostilities against their forces are indeed innumerable. As a matter of fact, the Dutch forces have conducted the following hostile acts which the Japanese could not remain silent. On December the 17th, when the Japanese troops landed at Miri in British North Borneo, Dutch warplanes four times bombed the Japanese troops at Kuchin Sarawak. A Dutch submarine attempted to attack the Japanese landing party, although the Dutch undersea craft was sunk by the Japanese and its crew was captured. In the Malay sector, the Dutch submarines attacked the Japanese vessels at Hatana, midway between Kodahabaru and Suha on December the 9th and 10th. In the Davao sector in Mindanao Island of the Philippines, the Dutch submarines and airplanes have been hampering the Japanese operations. Part of the Dutch Air Force has recently been transferred to Singapore to reinforce the British air strength there. By the Royal Air Force Bank of the Cetacean at Mudang or Sumatra. A large number of aircraft concentrated at airfields in northern Borneo have been active in the Philippine sector to hamper the Japanese military operations there. This is Radio Tokyo, continuing with you. Japanese forces have landed on Maynado of Celebes Island and Tarakan of Dutch Borneo. As was already clarified, Japan declared war on Britain and the United States with the purpose of emancipating various Oriental peoples and of freeing East Asia from the Anglo-American exploitation. 
Japan has always maintained a very friendly attitude toward the Netherlands East Indies, and Japan expected that the leaders of the Netherlands East Indies government would reflect on their policy for the sake of the Netherlanders as well as 60 million in the nation. However, the Netherlands East Indies government, completely ignoring this fair and human attitude of Japan, has challenged Japan in concert with Britain and America. It has openly resorted to hostile acts against Japan, affording the United States and Britain and Britain basis for their operations, and also establishing in the Netherlands East Indies the Allied Defense Headquarters of Britain, America, and the Dutch East Indies. Their hostile acts were particularly noticeable at Minado of Selic and Canabese Island and Karakan of Dutch Polio, where airplanes and submarines were concentrated to attack the air fleet. It was in the unbearable situation created by such challenging attitudes on the part of Dutch East Indies that Japanese Army and naval forces have landed on these two places. Japan had, a long time ago, clarified to the whole world that her real intentions were the emancipation of East Asia and the establishment of New East Asia, and not by no means a mere destruction which inevitably follows in the wake of a war. Consequently, Japan had no intention whatsoever of attacking the Netherlands East Indies. But when the leaders of the Dutch East Indies government challenged Japan, as they have done this time in concert with Britain and the United States, how could Japan remain indifferent without carrying out the inevitable landing operations? Following the successful Japanese landing operations in the Netherlands East Indies, divisions of opinions among the high military officials of the East Indies have become more wide, according to a reliable information reached here Monday. The antagonism against Britain, which had hitherto existed in some circles of the Dutch forces, has suddenly intensified and several high military officers openly declared their opposition against the British plan to establish the headquarters of General Weber in Java. Pointing out the inconsistency of General Weber's plan to transfer his headquarters to East Indies while boastfully declaring the defense of Singapore to the last man. In such access states that the British strategy will place the East Indies in a position of Norway, Belgium, France, Greece, Yugoslavia, and Holland, which had fallen victim to the cowardly British tactics. These Dutch military officers urged that the East Indies should give up its former pro-British attitude and promptly conclude an armistice with the Japanese. Pointing out the fact that the fall of Singapore is near and that the Dutch East Indies cannot expect any reinforcement from Britain and America, these circles urge that it is the best and only way for East Indies to follow the example of Prussian China. Japanese vanguards penetrated into the city of Kuala Lumpur at 11.30 o'clock Sunday morning. The Imperial headquarters announced shortly after noon Monday. With the fall of Kuala Lumpur, Singapore is now menaced by Japanese gunfire, and the fall of the last British stronghold in East India is now regarded as a matter of time. Kuala Lumpur, signifying the complete occupation of Kuala Lumpur, the sixth capital of the Federated Malay State and of Selangor, Japanese force at 6.30 p.m. Sunday, hoisted the rising sun flies of the capital building. The vanguard of the Japanese force had penetrated into Kuala Lumpur at 11.30 o'clock Sunday morning, and the city was completely in the possession of the Japanese troops five hours later. The fall of Kuala Lumpur, the capital of the Federated Malay State, which is the last stand for defense of Singapore, will greatly felicitate the Japanese drive towards Singapore. The unexpectedly seen fall of Kuala Lumpur, which is a key point on the defense of the peninsula, revealed the strength of the Japanese forces, so the British defenders had declared that they would make a determined stand there. It is understood that the Australian troops bore the brunt of the Japanese attack, but were forced to retreat under pressure of the Japanese offensive. Kuala Lumpur, which is the second largest city in the Malay Peninsula, has a population of more than 160,000. Between Kuala Lumpur and Singapore, there is no natural stronghold to check the advance of the Japanese forces. On the contrary, the big trunk highway leading to Singapore will extremely felicitate the advance of the Japanese Mekanite unit. This is the Broadcasting Corporation of Japan. Continuing with you. From a Japanese base in Ohio, 
This is Tom Marley. Federal forces from Rhine and Air have concentrated forces. Fierce gunfires upon the small British fleet under the command of Lieutenant General Percival in the Grand Sandera in Malacca province. A certain important junction south of Kuala Lumpur was also reduced by the Japanese. After occupying a fort west of Kuala Lumpur, Japanese forces in a sustained drive are advancing southward along the western coast of Malay Peninsula, smashing British resistance at random. Somewhere in Malay, a certain strategic part of Malacca State was completely encircled by the Japanese forces at Dong County. Japanese mechanized troops have already come far into that port city to annihilate British remnants. The war of Japanese has taken the jungles around the coast, facing the Malacca State. Shanghai, unable to stem the fierce of the of the Japanese forces, the British troops which abandoned Kuala Lumpur have fallen back to a line 50 miles south of Kuala Lumpur, a report from Singapore stated Sunday. Due to success of the feet, the British troops have completely lost their morale. So in the Malay, Large formations of Japanese army bombers Sunday assaulted British troops fleeing in disorder in southern Malay, simultaneously dealing a telling blow upon British transport vessels. Meanwhile, another unit of Japanese bombers heavily damaged two enemy fighters of 7,000 tons and 3,000 tons respectively. Also, an enemy merchant vessel of 6,000 tons anchored at the port of Maharani in Johore State was damaged heavily by the Japanese raiders. The Imperial Air Force at 515 on South announced in a communique that the Japanese Army Air Force, operating in the Malay sector, blew up a large enemy transport of 3,000 tons south and destroyed the enemy pair to enemy submarines in the Malacca Strait Saturday afternoon, when the Japanese Air Force carried out a surprise attack upon the enemy air convoy. Another unit of the Army Air Force, in cooperation with the ground forces, carried out fierce bombing attacks upon the fleeing enemy on the same day. And their campaigns capsized an enemy military plane fully loaded with a retreating British troops while blowing up 24 lorry, water lorries and armored cars, the communicated players. Anticipating the fall of Singapore, Governor Thomas of British Malaya fled from Singapore to Calcutta, reports information reaching Tokyo. The Governor of Malaya, in a radio speech from Calcutta, Told the British force in the Malay Peninsula to fight to the last man. Shanghai. Frightened by the rapid Japanese advance, the Malayan government has moved from Singapore to New Delhi, the capital of India, according to information reaching Shanghai. And both in the report, a Reuters dispatch from New Delhi said that the Malayan government has prohibited the movement of the government officials without permission. Saigon. Deliberation is going on among the chiefs of the British Malay Combined Forces in Singapore as to whether their headquarters should be removed to the Dutch East Indies, according to information from Singapore. In this connection, the British military authorities are stressing the fact that the removal of the headquarters, if it should be effected, would be for specific reasons and would have never mean the abandonment of Singapore, with any information recorded. Lisbon, concerning the war in Malaya, General Henry R. Cornell, Chief of Staff of the British Party in the Southwestern Pacific, in a radio speech from Singapore Saturday, declared that the war to be fought from now on was going to be difficult and was almost hopeless. Although the British forces are resisting the advance of Japanese forces with the assistance of fresh reinforcements, it is only a waste of time to continue the present resistance, General Cornell declared. His speech is identical with a statement issued by the British government at the time when the British forces withdrew their troops from Dunkirk, Norway, Greece, Kuk, and Malaya. The present statement of General Cornell is taken as an indication of the wholesale withdrawal of the British troops from Malaya. Saigon. A report reaching Saigon said at Sunday that the Japanese forces further landed their first troops on Vietnam Island in order to launch the wholesale offensive against remaining American troops in the Philippines. After crushing American resistance on the Bataan Peninsula, Japanese forces hoisted the rising sun flag at the American air base at Olongapo at 10 o'clock Saturday morning. You can hear it was announced Monday afternoon. This is Radio Tokyo, continuing with the news. The Japanese cemetery in the city of Manila was dynamited by American forces, reports a special assignment dispatch from Manila. 
the tombstones of the Japanese naval officers and men who died in the Lanza on their way home from Europe during the First World War were broken to pieces. Several other Japanese boats were also violated by American soldiers. The tombstones and the sacred tomb of the memories of the Japanese were all scattered and covered with mud. Rebel Tokyo reminds you that this atrocity was committed by the lowest animals of the American army. In human treatment at the end of the American troops, to which the Japanese residents in the war were subjected at the outset of the present war, was disposed to be more atrocious than we had before. Besides those 48 Japanese residents who were massacred by the American regular troops, it has been disclosed that other Japanese residents in the Vaal were treated most inhumanly while they were confined. During 10 days of confinement, 200 Japanese suffered from amoebic dysentery, 500 from influenza, and still 500 others suffered from intestinal trouble. Many others also suffered from malaria and diphtheria. The entire Japanese people are extremely indignant over this inhuman and atrocious treatment of the Americans. Manila. The United States must cease fighting in the Philippines, thereby preventing the Philippines from going through the tragic ravages of war. General Emilio Arignaldo, aged Filipino patriot, declared in an interview with the Tokyo Infinity Correspondent at the General's residence in the suburb of Cavite. General Aguinaldo, who died in, in 1899, led the formidable uprising against the American forces in the Philippines, said in an interview that he heartily pays respect to the Japanese government for its untiring peaceful effort to negotiate the American problems prior to the outbreak of the present conflict. The general jubilee expressed the hope that the Philippines will rehabilitate itself as part of Greater East Asia under Japan's leadership. Now that the Philippines is able to free itself from the United States yoke, whatever methods of nationalism the United States may employ to disturb East Asia, we, Orientals, owe it to ourselves to establish a prosperity sphere in East Asia, the ancient Filipino patriot declared. Shanghai, leading cities in Burma were bombed. Powerful formation of Japanese bombers covered the city of Mumei and Savoy in Burma from the night. According to a Wangong dispatch, military establishments in Mumei and Savoy were blasted by scores of their ships, the dispatch added. Shanghai, a Wangong dispatch involved with the formation of Anglo American aircraft, which induced nine American fighters and five British pursuit planes on Saturday, engaged the Japanese planes in a bar fight over a tire burner border. The Allied air squadrons were broken up and sent fleeing to the Burmese territory. The report added that the Anglo American planes attempted to bomb Japanese military establishments in Thailand. It is also revealed that several enemy planes were shot down in the encounter. Shanghai. The British military forces in Burma announced that the King Kong regime had accepted the supply necessary munitions to the British forces in Burma, a random dispatch reported on January the 9th. It is, however, ridiculous that the Chinese regime, which called for the supply of Anglo-American munitions, has accepted to play the role of supplier of munitions with the British military authorities in Burma. Can it be true that Chiang Kai-shek offers such a reckless proposal? It is worthy of note that British military authorities had to rely upon the dependence from Anglo-American forces posted in the British capital, which in the British capital, which